Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. I'm Olivia. And I'm James. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we'll be diving into a topic that connects us all, friendship and family. These are two of the most important aspects of life, and having the right words and phrases to talk about them in English can help you communicate more naturally. That's right. Whether you're chatting with a friend, introducing your family, or just explaining relationships in English, we've got you covered. Let's get started. So, James, when we talk about friendship, it's really interesting how different cultures view friendships differently, right? Absolutely. For example, in some cultures, it's normal to have a few really close friends, while in others, people might have large groups of friends, but not necessarily that one best friend. Exactly. Speaking of which, best friend is a phrase people use often in English to describe the one person they're closest to. But what other phrases can people use to talk about their friends? Great question. Aside from best friend, People often say close friend, buddy, or even pal. If someone is describing a more casual friendship, they might say acquaintance, which means they know the person but aren't very close. Oh, that's a good one. And if we're talking about spending time together, there's hang out. For example, I'm going to hang out with my friends this weekend. That's really common in conversational English. Right. Another common phrase is catch up with. If you haven't seen a friend for a while, you can say, let's catch up soon, which means you want to talk and hear what's new in their life. That's one of my favorite phrases. And when you meet a new friend, you might hit it off. This means you immediately get along with someone. So, if you really enjoy talking to someone new, you can say, we hit it off right away. Exactly. Friendships can also change over time. You might grow apart from someone, meaning you don't talk as much anymore, or you might say you've kept in touch, which means you've stayed connected even if you don't see each other often. Now, moving on to family, this can be a little more complicated in English because there are so many different family members to talk about. Definitely. So, when we're introducing family members, we often start with the basics. For example, mom and dad are common for parents and siblings is the word for brothers and sisters. Exactly. A lot of learners might already know brother and a sister, but siblings is a great word if you want to talk about them in general. You can say, I have two siblings, instead of saying, I have one brother and one sister. That's a helpful tip. And then you have grandparents, which include both your grandmother and grandfather. People often say grandma and grandpa as more casual terms. Right. Another useful word is cousin, which refers to the children of your aunts and uncles. It's one of those words that doesn't change based on gender, so it works for both male and female cousins. Good point. And in English, there are terms like aunt, and uncle for your parents' siblings. Some people use nicknames like auntie or uncle to sound more casual or affectionate. And let's not forget about the in-laws. When someone gets married, their spouse's family becomes their in-laws. So you have terms like a mother-in-law, father-in-law, and even brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Exactly. If you're talking about someone's children, you can say son or daughter. And then there's niece for your sibling's daughter and nephew for their son. Now that we've covered the basic vocabulary, let's talk about some useful phrases you can use in conversations about friendship and family. One of the most common is family comes first. This phrase means that family is the most important thing in someone's life. You'll often hear it in conversations about making decisions that prioritize family. I love that phrase. There's also a blood is thicker than water, which means family bonds are stronger than friendships or other relationships. Exactly. And when it comes to friendship, you might hear people say, a friend in need is a friend indeed. It means a true friend is someone who helps you when you really need it. That's a classic. 
And let's not forget, friends are the family we choose. This is a great way to express that your close friends can be just as important as family. Right. Another great phrase for friendships is to be there for someone. If you support someone in tough times, you can say, I'll always be there for you. All right, now let's do a quick practice dialogue to show how you can use some of these words and phrases in real life conversations. Great idea. Let's pretend we're talking about catching up after a long time. I'll start. Hey, Olivia, it's been ages since we last caught up. How have you been? James. I know, right? Life's been busy, but I've been good. How about you? Pretty much the same. I've been hanging out with my cousin a lot lately. We've been hitting it off really well. That's awesome. I haven't seen my cousins in a while. But my brother and I are super close, we're like best friends. That's great. I've been spending more time with my family too. You know, family comes first. Definitely. Speaking of which, have you kept in touch with Sarah from college? I haven't talked to her in forever. Yeah, we've kept in touch. We actually caught up over lunch last week. She's doing well. I need to reach out to her. It's so important to keep those friendships alive. So, Olivia, what are some tips for our listeners who want to improve their conversations about friendship and family in English? One key tip is to practice using these words and phrases in everyday situations. Even if you're just thinking to yourself, try to describe your relationships using the vocabulary we talked about today. I agree. Another tip is to listen to native speakers talk about their friends and family. You'll hear a lot of these words in movies, TV shows, and even on social media. Yes. And don't be afraid to ask questions about someone's family or friendships. It's a great way to practice your English and connect with people. One more thing, try writing about your own family and friends. Even if it's just a short paragraph, it helps reinforce the vocabulary and phrases. Well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. We hope you enjoyed our conversation about friendship and family and learned some useful new vocabulary along the way. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to practice what you've learned today. Conversations about family and friendship are such an important part of everyday life. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a comment with your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care and keep practicing. Bye for now.